All right, just a quick follow up to yesterday's video. Uh, we listed some batteries. Now, we didn't anticipate the uh, interest on these, so I think they're gonna sell out probably by the end of today. It's only like a, a pallet of them, right? We don't know if we're gonna get more in the future. We might, we might not, you, you never know. Uh, but a lot of times we do get second, third, fourth batches of stuff. So maybe it's likely, but sometimes we don't. So it's hard to say. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go through the questions. I saw a couple of questions in the comments section uh, of the video and I'm gonna just answer them here, right? So size, someone said, hey, uh, it would be useful if we knew the size of these so that we can plan for our project. 100%, I'm with you there. I actually did measure the size and then I don't know what I did. I never made it to the listing and then made it to the video, but that's because I just wrote it on this thing and then I put this on the bottom there and then I was done, right? But now that we have it here, yes, these are 21 and a half inches long by four and a quarter inches wide by two inches tall. I'm gonna ask my people to convert that to metric and list it on the uh, product listing there so that if you're looking for that info, it'll be there, right? How to charge. Someone asked how to charge it. And specifically they said, if you connect these two in series, like I showed in the video, how do, does someone charge? Simple, I <laughs> get a 48 volt charger. 48 volt charger, uh, I think each pack is like maximum, not to go above 29 volts, I think. Let me do some quick, calculation here so 29 volts times two yeah so get uh 58.8 i think that's a very common uh charger voltage uh charger that's a 48 volt charger right uh for e-bikes you can get all kinds of different ones so you can get a variable power supply and set it to 58 volts and then charge them that way uh yeah you just get a charger get a charger that you can that's the right voltage 58 volts, around 58 volts. Don't go past 59, 60, 62. That's, that'll be too high. You'll be overcharging that. Now they do have a BMS, so the BMS will just step in and then start disconnecting batteries. But you don't want to rely on that. You just want to get the bright charger with the right voltage and then rely on that and use the BMS as a fail safe, as a secondary, you know, uh, safety mechanism. So that's how you charge it. Now, another question that I saw here, will it work with the EcoFlow River? Now, the interesting thing about that is that I have an EcoFlow sitting right at the bench. Let's go see how to do it. Here is the EcoFlow River. This one right here is one of the smallest power stations that EcoFlow makes, right? And this that's why it's good because it's nice and light, but it's got all kinds of plugs and stuff. So the thing about these is that you can't use the scooter battery packs like you can with all the other ones because this one has a maximum input, solar input of 25 volts at 12 amps, right? So that means the, the, the 42, 36 nominal uh, packs that we use to extend the capacity of all the other uh, power packs don't, doesn't work on this little unit, right? But luckily, these are 24 volt, right? So they're gonna be right there. I guess maybe if you charge them all the way up to like close to 28, 29, I think they'll rest somewhere around 27, 26 or something. It might trigger. So we're, it's close, but if they're at nominal, another one of the questions is like, what is, does the BMS work? And yeah, of course the BMS is working. All you have to do is just uh, test it out here. Now to the point of this question, how do you, you connect this battery to the EcoFlow, right? And it's simple, you will have to change the cable, the connector, because these come with like an Anderson type connector like this, right? Um, so all I did here, uh, I mean, the easiest way to do it is just to solder an XT60 connector that you can buy on Amazon. But if you didn't wanna, if you don't have soldering iron, if you don't wanna learn to do that, you could even use these uh, automotive crimp style spade connectors, right? Um, these are the large ones. So they can carry, this is not gonna pull more than 10 amps. So uh, this totally works. So that's what I did here. And then what you do is you connect it on the solar input. Here we go. Let's turn on this unit. It's at 86 right now. So there we go. It's putting 150, 
200 uh, and it's bouncing back. And the, the reason why it's bouncing like that is because it's a MPPT solar charge controller. So it's trying to see how much it can push that battery uh, to get the most, right? That's what it usually does on the solar panels. It looks like it's settled at around 195, 180. It's going to bounce a bit. That's normal. We're connecting a battery in a port that is made to, to connect a solar panel. So there's this is sort of the, the workarounds that you have to deal with, right? But definitely you're charging this EcoFlow now from this battery at around 180 watts, right? Now, how do you charge the battery then? then just get a 24 volt charger. You connect it in here, you charge the battery, and then you keep it. And then whenever your EcoFlow is running low and you wanna charge it, you can take it on the go and you could just extend the battery. So now the way it's working right now is the energy is going from here and it's transferring into the internal batteries here. Now you can connect uh, you know, USB devices here or even AC. Uh, devices over here and then that energy is going to be transferred and go to that right so this is going to last much longer now because you're adding about you know about half a kilowatt hour worth of this so this more than doubles the capacity of this little unit i think this unit is yeah, this unit right here is 288 watt hours this is 600 watt hours so you're tripling <laughs> the size this thing is three times bigger than the battery inside of this. So by connecting that, you can double, triple, uh, quadruple, I don't know. Tri I think triple the, the capacity of this thing, right? So whatever you plug in here is not gonna run down as fast, it's gonna last like three times longer if, if you have this battery connected there, charging that in that way. So there you go. It's a very easy way to extend the life of your EcoFlow River uh, portable device. And of course, this will work with anything that is a brown 25 volts input in the, uh, either in the solar charge controller or in the other ones, right? Now, the other bigger ones, like all these other guys right here, they have higher input on the solar panels. And that's why we always recommend using the higher voltage batteries. Uh, you know, you could use these and just put them in, in series and then do go to 48 and then connect them that way these will work also right but the scooter battery packs are already set up that way and we're uh pushing those we'll make some more videos uh in the future on the different devices and which batteries uh we will take to do that but this one does definitely work with the ecoflow next question uh will it work with the 3000 uh, watt inverter yes if you set them up right you can right and specifically a 24 volt 3000 watt inverter and the answer is yes if there's a 24 volt batteries will work with a 24 volt now you just have to make sure you have enough of them so that you can get full power out of your inverter right so 3000 watts each pack is 600 watt hours and they're capable of 1c that means they're capable of 600 watts so you do 3000 watts right and you divide that by 600 which equals uh, five and that means you need a minimum of five battery packs to get full power out of the inverter now if you want to run that inverter at peak for x amount of time for 10 hours let's say so now you have to multiply five which is the minimum to get that full power out times the amount of hours 10 in this case would be so then you would need 50 to run that inverter uh at peak for 10 hours now the inverter probably won't last because stuff doesn't usually last long if you run at a peak but that's how you figure this stuff out if you're gonna run it at half you know half duty cycle so 2500 then you do the math on that right so you need two and a half packs to do the minimum if you want to run that for 10 hours then you multiply by 10 so 25 packs in that part but uh that's how you figure this stuff out um another question here's a question that hasn't been asked can they be made into 12 volts and the answer is yes here's how you do it this are all connected in series here so it's 8s so what you do is you cut it in here i mean you don't have to cut it these are you just take this tape off and they they pops apart and then you disconnect these wires you will have to get rid of your bms and change it right 
because this is a 24 volt BMS, so you'll need a 4S 12 volt BMS. And so then what you do is once you split up the packs, then you connect the positive of this pack with the positive of this pack and the negative of this pack to the negative. So you basically connect them together. You could probably put them side by side here and it'll be a 12 volt 50 amp power battery pack. Um, now, how do you connect the balance leads? Yeah, you can connect the most positive to the most positive on the one pack. The, the you know, the, the C, the center uh, uh, tap of the first and second cells you could, of the one pack, you connect them to the other one, right? So you just go down the line, connect them all together, making them essentially one battery pack. And that's how you would do a 12 volt out of these. It's totally doable. I know someone's gonna ask this question. Someone's gonna wanna do it. Uh, I would say it's not the best option because we are offering 12 volt batteries already configured, right? You can buy this on our store right now for $99, the same price as this, and it's already 12 volts, 50 amp hours, the same battery that you would make by cutting this in half and doing all that other work. Mine is the work. So why do the work, right? Just let somebody else buy this and use this as a 24 volt instead of you hacking and doing all this stuff. Now, maybe size constraints, maybe there's a reason why you want to do that. And I guess you can't do it. And that's why I'm uh, explaining here roughly, you know, just vaguely how to do it. Uh, it is possible, but you, sh you don't have to do it if you just need a 12 volt 50 amp hour battery. We offer them. So there you go. I hope you found this info useful. Like I said, these are going fast. People have shown a lot of interest in these and they're moving. If you are on the fence, you should probably pull the trigger because they're probably not gonna be there by the end of the day, by tomorrow. Uh, now we do have our other lithium iron phosphate large format 50 amp hour uh, packs in stock. The 50 amp hours and the 100 amp hours are in stock. And we're, going, we're working right now on the 24 volt 50 amp hours so if those work out better for you uh or you miss on these then you could always get those right so there's uh there's good batteries coming up we have a few more that we have to list but uh these ones are if you're looking for lithium iron phosphate these you know now we have some options there thank you for watching this video we'll see you guys on the next one bye So these are all exactly at nominal. You see that 25.4, this one over here now, 25.5, this one right here, 25.5, this one over here now, 25.5. These are all at nominal voltage, which is great news because they're all brand new and in good shape.